Hello, eBPF Summit. I'm excited to talk to you today about reliable user space TLS tracing with eBPF. My name's Dom, and I'm an engineer at New Relic working on the Pixie open source project, where we're working to tackle these interesting challenges. So before we get into TLS, I wanted to give Pixie an introduction. It's an eBPF-based observability tool for Kubernetes that provides full fidelity protocol traces between your microservices. The reason why Pixie needs to solve this TLS problem is because of how widely adopted it's becoming in today's environments. There's many, many monitoring and observability tools that have blind spots when data is encrypted, and we want Pixie to provide deep insight in these situations. So to roadmap out what we'll be discussing today, we're first going to go over TLS tracing and Pixie's initial implementation and how that runs into challenges with user space tracing. We'll then talk about our revamped implementation and revisit how that expanded our support to handle new applications and address the challenges. And then we'll also talk about what we think comes in the future. Moving on to TLS, we can see uh, here's an example of how we trace a plain text application on the left hand side. We can attach our BPF program directly to the send and receive syscalls since the application is calling those directly with its payloads. On the right hand side, we see an application that's using TLS. And so that same send and receive syscall layer already has encrypted data. So we need our instrumentation to occur at an earlier point in the data lifecycle. And so this is at the SSL write and SSL read function calls within the TLS library. So this shows that in order to handle these TLS use cases, we have to trace user space. Uh, it's unavoidable. However, tracing production systems comes with additional challenges. There's different types of linking for these libraries. There's a variety of popular libraries. And ideally, we could cover many of them with a single implementation. And even the way you use the library can also create challenges. And so what I'm trying to articulate is, is that having access to the plain text data isn't enough. When you're trying to debug production services, that tracing data needs additional metadata in order to be useful. The way that Pixie's initial form of TLS tracing address this is by using a socket FD to provide connection identity. The plain text protocol tracing has easy socket FD access because it's part of the syscall contract. However, if we look at the SSL write function signature, the socket file descriptor is not part of this. And so in order for Pixie to trace this, we actually walk user space data structures to access this FD. And that's contained within that first SSL struct argument. So this is where, um, this user space data structure doesn't have a uh, stable interface. And so new versions of that library will break the tracing. And so I won't be able to dig into this in more detail, but my tracing summit talk later this month, will be doing a deep dive on that as well. So what we realized as we started to support more use cases is that socket FD access at this user space layer is extremely challenging. And you know, the more applications we supported, we realized that we were fighting an uphill battle because we were just proliferating more offsets with very little stability guarantees. So as we looked to simplify this implementation, we realized that it helped to classify these. And there's two major categories. The first is BIO native. And BIO is a OpenSSL concept standing for basic input output, and it refers to how OpenSSL does IO. And so BIO native is where OpenSSL performs the socket IO for you. And this is the case where the SSL struct that we were walking will have its socket file descriptor populated. The second case is custom BIO, which is where OpenSSL is used for encryption exclusively, and the application handles IO itself usually in an asynchronous fashion. As we dig into these use cases more, um, we can see the difference at how they work. And so Pixie's existing form of TLS tracing worked with this left-hand side. And so what we felt as we classified these and looked at them in more detail, we felt that there were some assumptions we could make about the call stack that could help us uh, get 
away from the unstable user space interface and back to our stable syscall interface. So in this BIO native case, all of the SSL write and SSL read calls call send and receive. And we felt that there was an opportunity here for us to pass the socket file descriptor back from the syscall layer to our user space tracing layer. So to reiterate that, we wanted to be able to assume that socket syscalls occur while these functions are on the stack. And that would provide an opportunity for us to pass a socket FD from the syscall to the user space tracing on the U return probe. And so by allowing us to use this stable interface, we would be able to remove our reliance on user space offsets and avoid ongoing maintenance of supporting new offsets as they changed for new versions. Now, this idea really relies on our assumptions about the call stack being correct. And as we investigated this, we were concerned that it was possible for unrelated IO and syscalls to occur while these libraries are on the stack. So as part of this implementation, we built a standalone integrity checking mechanism that later became a piece of the TLS tracing to verify if when these syscalls occur, that the file descriptor is always the same. Because for example, something like buffered writes are okay, where the syscall is called multiple times for the same file descriptor, but we didn't want to associate plain text data with different file descriptors. And so we've run that check in production for five months and we've identified five programs that violate this assumption. Um, we also see it happen in a very small percentage of clusters and a small percentage of the overall connections. And so because this isn't occurring randomly for a large number of programs, we believe that this assumption is holds true and that uh, while we need to filter out some of these violations, that overall uh, this call stack mechanism can be relied on. So now that we've talked about it at a high level, I want to walk you through how the tracing works and the BPF probes that occur. We're going to imagine we have a service that queries a database over a TLS connection. And so when the query is sent, SSL write will get called. This will trigger our first probe, which will store an entry in a BPF map which the key will be the current PID TGID and the value will be an invalid FD Sentinel value. From there, write syscalls will occur. And our uh, second BPF probe is gonna check to see if that PID TGID exists, which will validate that a user space function is on the stack. And if it is, it will take its, sys or its socket FD and update the BPF map with it. From there, the syscall will return and then finally, we will have our SSL write return probe trigger, and we will check this same PID TGID key again. And if it is no longer that Sentinel value, we will send the socket FD and the plain text to a perf buffer, and Pixie's user space component will take things from there. So I hope this shows at a high level how um, we our design allows us to remove the unstable user space interface from the picture and uh, really simplifies the solution. So now that we've seen the solution in detail, I wanna talk about how our tracing coverage changed and also things that we are looking for for the future. Here we can see that the initial implementation covered OpenSSL 1.1.0 and 1.1.1. OpenSSL v3 had potential to be supported, but required figuring out those user space offsets and making code changes to apply them. The redesigned implementation covers all of these changes with no additional code changes. So it vastly simplifies our maintenance and also gives us broader support. Future versions of OpenSSL will work out of the box. In addition to that, we were able to trace boring SSL and OpenSSL statically linked. This is something that the initial implementation could not handle Boring SSL follows a rolling release style. And as a result, it's difficult to apply memory offsets because there is no versioning information available. And so our redesigned implementation removes that from the picture and handles this use case transparently. There's additional use cases Pixie supports, but it relies on application specific implementations. 
And these all fit in that custom BIO bucket. So hopefully this gives you a high level overview of how our tracing has been broadened and with reduced maintenance, but there are still these BIO, custom BIO cases that we'd like to tackle in the future. So summarizing, I mentioned that we have this custom BIO use cases that we'd like to tackle in the future. Another area of expansion would be handling statically linked cases where the symbols are completely stripped. Our redesigned implementation can handle cases like this, but we don't actually know where the functions exist in memory, and so we can't attach our BPF probes to it. It's a tough problem to solve, but I think there's a lot of value in investigating that. And with that, I'd like to thank you for attending my talk, and I'm happy to answer any questions that you have.